right. So if you, you come down to the elbow now, if you look at the, the, the entire spectrum of the dislocations of the elbow, it can be any of these things. And uh, the more complex it gets, the more, you know, in terms of the approaches and everything, you need to start making strategies for these. For me, it is, it's more of soft tissue injury rather than the bony injury. You have the capsule, the ligaments, the muscular, and of course the bony injuries, inherently unstable. But what we see actually is at the end of the day, when we start practicing and uh, treating this, most of them actually end up with a lot of stiffness. I don't see much of instability as such, and arthrosis can happen. Some of the major buttresses we have to be aware of is, of course, the big player is the coronoid in the terrible triad injuries. The radial head never, never excise and leave it alone because it is the most important valgus buttress. When you come to the ligaments, the anterior bundle here is the valgus restraint uh, on the ulna collateral ligament here. And the LUCL is the other big player in this scenario, which is more of a varus restraint and the PLRI kind of instability happens because we don't repair this. If, if at all, we don't repair this. Now, dislocation with radial head where the posterior lateral corner is involved is one aspect of it. And moment the coronoid, th that's why I said the two big players come in, the other one coronoid comes, that becomes the terrible. And this is what we call as a terrible triad. But then terrible triad, as I said, is more of soft issues. So, it leads to both primary and secondary stabilizers being damaged there, leading to recurrent instability, ossification, stiffness, and arthrosis. So I'm looking at all the three components here, the bone, the ligaments, and the common flexor and extensor origins which could be damaged here. We all know this mechanism, the circle of soft tissue disruption, which is a very specific pattern which happens uh, in the elbow, starting off from the lateral side and ending up on the medial side. And that is where even our planning should happen as we go towards treating of these things. This is important for the postgraduates here. These are high impact injuries. So you always look at head injuries because it has an effect again of the, on the elbow stiffness later on with heterotopic ossification. Don't look elbow as a single joint. Look at the forearm as a single joint till the wrist because the distal radial joint instabilities can happen in these patients. All three nerves have to examine, but very special attention to ulnar nerve, and never, never miss out on the compartment syndrome. When you come to the treatment strategy as such, you always do a close reduction and then do the imaging. Especially the CT without the reduction or the close reduction of the elbow is not a very useful thing. So always do a close reduction and then do the CT scans. The other important aspect is the examination and the anesthesia. So CT scans after a close reduction gives much more uh, you know, information about the other parts of the injury than without that. And as I said, these CD, the, the uh, how do I click on this? Can you just click on that? So the 3D reconstructions might give beautiful pictures there. How do I click on that? Do you have a mouse? Okay. Does the mouse work on this? Yeah, okay. But then some of us sometimes might do MRIs for especially the soft tissue injuries. Not a routinely done aspect, but then that, that shows the amount of, especially if patients come uh, a little delayed, we would like to do image and see what has happened to the soft tissues here. Examination and anesthesia, can you please click on that? Examination and anesthesia is very, very important for us to bring out the amount of instability which part of it is unstable, the, the, the valgus and the varus instabilities, that's very, very important. Uh, how easily the elbow dislocates or how easily the elbow relocates, again, that is also very important. The medial and lateral varus and valgus instability tells you or prepares you whether you have to go and repair the MCL or not. You need, also need to do the push and pull test for the longitudinal instability. So this can be done at anesthesia for you to uh, start preparing for your management. Please click on that. Yeah, and again, you, if you can screen under the uh, uh, C-arm, the entire elbow, you know which of the fragments require uh, extra attention when you start fixing this, how easily it relocates back, and how soon it dislocates, and what are the components involved in this. Yeah. I'm going reverse. Okay. Then it comes to the approaches. So you have the surgical planning in terms of approaches, and then this is the last part of the method of fixation. All of you have to be aware of different approaches because you have to be very flexible on this. So Kaplan's interval, 
the cocker's interval, both have to be very, very well known. A lot of times, the injury shows the way. The, there is a big rent there, so the, the approach, especially through injury, is very, very important and becomes very easy for you to uh, see the entire uh, injury itself. Once you elevate the extensors, you stay superior to the lateral collateral ligament and you use that LCL tear for your access there. And once you incise the anterior capsule, you will be directly onto the... Uh, so this is an example where the, the rent, the injury is showing you the way where to go and you don't have to really look at the planes of these things. Very rarely we use the medial approaches, but then again it's between the FCR and the, the, the FCU there for MCL reconstruction and sometimes coronoid uh, fixation itself. Posterior global approach sometimes, especially if the proximal ulna is involved in your, in your complex dislocations, uh, you have to go ECU, between ECU and coronoid for medial side or radial head and LUCL for the lateral side. So this is sometimes rarely used here. Uh, with a posterior dislocation with radial head, you do a close reduction of the elbow dislocation, assess the radial head, and never ever excise and leave it alone. Either you fix it with whatever implants you can or you are comfortable with, uh, you know, with a plate or with the screws like this, or you replace it based on the assessment and then whatever processes or the spacer you have. Coronoid, this is the classification we use, not the Brian and Morris, because it tells you more exactly how to fix these things and where variety of options are there, the screw plate and the suture anchors. Be ready to use double approaches if required. Inside out method of fixation is what we would, so we would start from inside and come from outside in terrible triads. Radial head fracture determines your approach. I'll give you the algorithm later. And the most important key player is the coronoid there and of course the soft tissues there. So stabilize it and start mobilizing as early as possible. Just an example here, here we had already had planned for radial excision, capsular repair, radial head replacement. Then you come out, as you come out from inside, then the LCL repair and then all through the lateral approach. So the radial head was comminuted and then LCL injury there. And then this is the fixation of the capsule itself. Uh, it's, it's always better to have some amount of instability when you actually get the capsular repair. You can't have reduce the whole thing and try to uh, hold on to the capsule. So always have some amount of instability there, get the joint out and then you'll get an easy access for your, uh, so that you don't stress on any of the other soft tissues. And that is the suture anchor there uh, for the LCL approach. This is another case here. Again, radial head excision, and I'm just showing the technique of where, how you have to do the LCL repair, and all of us have to be aware that uh, that, that kind of a, the two suture anchor threads which come out there at the isometric point, and this particular suture technique is, is very easy. The Mason Allen kind of suture technique is very good for getting a very good hold of the LCL repair there at this point. And that's the same patient. Second day, we start the mobilizing uh, and, uh, you know, with a hinged kind of a brace or a ROM embrace in these patients. There's another patient, again, if you see the lateral head, the, the radial head is not so comminuted, but then I would remove the fragment just for an access, a temporary access there for this. And once that is done, this, we have used a suture anchor here for the capsular repair. There's no major coronoid fracture as such, so I've used a suture anchor there and held on to that. But then probably sometimes the suture anchor direction might not be correct enough and capsular repair, then radial head fixation and then common extensor origin. And once we finished the surgery and what we saw was this drop sign which we were talking about in the morning and sometimes some days are bad and you might have to use these kind of things. We don't have other, I mean for me to put another suture anchor or a third suture anchor sometimes can be difficult in a patient with financial problems. So that time we I would use this, but it settles down well. You need to be really careful when you put in this wire, but make sure you remove it by about three weeks. This is a three month follow up and patient is, is doing well. So it, it's just the whole soft tissue tightens there, the capsule contracts, scars and settles down. So rarely we see these kind of instabilities. We, I'm more worried about the, uh, the, the stiffness itself. MCL, if the alnohumeral joint remains reduced with full flexion to 45 degrees, MCL repair is not necessary, but otherwise you'll have to go and repair the MCL. And further, we used hinged elbow brace or sometimes very rarely a cross spinning. Uh, limited motion elbow brace, active elbow flexion, the moment the pain subsides, that is very important in this. And sometimes we use turnbuckle splints later on by about third or fourth month if the stiffness is more. I use routinely metacin for six weeks in these patients. So if your radial head fracture is there and you can reconstruct and there's a major coronoid 
uh, problem there, you go on to the medial approach. But if you are replacing and you can take out that radial head, you can approach the coronoid from the lateral approach and you can fix it. And then, of course, you end up with the LCL repair. Check on table 35 to 45 degrees of flexion if it is unstable and there is an opening on the medial side, you'll have to go and do an MCL repair. So this would be the basic strategy for most of the terrible triad patients. So it actually means bony, ligamentous, soft tissue injuries. It's not just the three bony components of terrible triad. And pre-op and intra-op evaluation, especially CT and examination and anesthesia. Be flexible on combined approaches. Know all the approaches and add an, uh, another approach. Don't hesitate on that. And you fix well and mobilize early of these patients. Thank you so much. Thank you.